Hello everyone, let's look at this integral here. This integral is a uh, has a integrand that's a simple rational function. Its numerator is a constant and its denominator is a linear function. And as you can see here, we have ax plus b, where a and b are both constants. And we are going to assume that there are real numbers here. And we also need to make sure that a is non-zero because if a is equal to zero, then this ax is equal to zero and then we have only one over b and one over b is a constant and when you integrate one over b then that will be a different type of function uh, than this one and so we actually do want to have a to be non-zero so that we have a linear expression in the denominator so we will deal with this kind of integral okay so let's get started usually when people see this they will tell you um, let's just do a u substitution let u be ax plus b yeah, so while that works, um, I would say that it's unnecessary because we can simply just look at the um, we can just look at the derivative of some function that will give you this function and then just make some adjustments to reverse the chain rule, and that will be a lot easier to do. Okay, so let's try to do some scratch work here. So to start, we are going to just think about what happens when we differentiate a function and how do we get this expression here what kind of function when you differentiate it will give you it will produce this as the derivative and because we see one over some expression right here so we are going to guess that it will be the ln function okay so let's try that so if we take the derivative of the natural log of let's say um <clears throat> What do we get here? We are going to, let's say we take the absolute value, right? We have ax plus b, okay? So let's try this one and see what's going on here. Um, and then you may say, why do we put ax plus b inside the natural log function? It's really because we have the whole ax plus b in the denominator. So that's why I chose ax plus b to be in the uh, L1 function so that when we differentiate, we are going to put have that ax plus b in the denominator. So let's take the derivative. And then when we take the derivative, then we are going to get what? One over, okay, so that's the differentiating the ln function. And then you are going to have whatever that's inside the ln function, so that will be ax plus b. Okay, and then due to the chain rule, we are going to have what? The derivative of ax plus b. So that will give us a. And so as you can see here, this is the derivative of the L1 of absolute value ax plus b. And we do have this integrand here, which is just 1 over ax plus b. That's the same function here. The only thing that we do not have is the extra factor a. And how do we get rid of this a? And so what we can do is that we can think about multiplying to both sides of this equation so that we can cancel out the a. And then you may say, what is that? That will be the reciprocal of a. So let's try that here. So let's say if we multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over a. And then on the left side of the equation, we still have the derivative of ln of absolute value of ax plus b. Okay, then you may say, can we really do that here? Because we're differentiating the function, right? So can we just multiply by a constant? Um, because this is a constant, that's why we can do it. According to the constant multiple rule, instead of differentiating the constant and the function at the same time, we can actually move the constant outside and then just differentiate just the function, okay? And so that's why it's okay that we, we multiply both sides of the equation by this constant right here. And if we do the same thing here, then what happens? Then we are going to get 1 over a and then times what? Times, times all this stuff. So let me just copy that expression. Let me just copy that and then put it right here. And do you see what's going on here? When you take the a and multiply by one over a, it's going to become one, right? Yeah, so you're going to get one. And so we do have that one over ax plus b.
Okay, but when you multiply the derivative of ln of absolute value ax plus b by 1 over a, that's actually the same thing as what? That's actually the same thing as differentiating um, a different function, and that function is including that 1 over a in there. Do you see what's going on here? That's the same thing as this one. So now if we differentiate this expression right here and we get one over ax plus b, which is this integrand here, that means the antiderivative of one over ax plus b would be one over a times ln of absolute value ax plus b. Okay, so we actually come up with the answer for this. Okay, so let's just write down the answer right now. So the antiderivative would be, what is that? That's the one over a, right? One over a. And then we have ln of ax plus b, and then plus the constant of integration. So that will be the answer. And this formula can be applied to um, when a and b are given, right? Um, just one thing that I want to point out here is that it, do you see a similarity between this problem and the other problems? If you have watched my videos um, on finding basic antiderivatives, um, it's when you have a function, when you have an outer function and it has an inner function of a linear expression in there, then we usually do, um, we usually will get this kind of answer. And then you may say, what does it mean by this kind of answer? You see what's going on here? Once we find the antiderivative for the outer function, we actually need to multiply by um, some numbers reciprocal. What is that numbers reciprocal? It's actually this number right here. This is the coefficient of the x in the linear expression. And so because that's a, so we need to multiply by its reciprocal. If you watch my other videos, you actually will see uh, the same pattern for some other types of functions whose outer function we can um, directly integrate. And then it's the inside is a linear function. And then all we need to do to reverse the chain rule is to multiply by the reciprocal of this coefficient. Okay, so um, that's the answer for this integral here. I'm just going to show a few short examples just to show how we um, how we use this formula right here. So let me just remove all that scratch work because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so now um, let me put an example right here. Let's say you have the integral of one over. Um, let's try a simple one right here, uh, 3x plus 4, okay? And so how do we integrate this one? So we know that it, we are going to get a natural log function, right? So we are going to have natural log, absolute value. Now, just know that there was the space that I left right here because I need to multiply by that reciprocal of the coefficient, right? So make sure that you leave some space in the front. And then we are going to have everything that's in the denominator we put inside the natural log function. We put it inside the absolute value. So we get 3x plus 4. And then what do we need to multiply in the front? Um, the a is the 3. So we multiply by its reciprocal, which will be 1 over 3. And then plus the constant of integration. Okay, so that's easy, right? Let's try one more and then let's see more details right here. So sometimes it's given to you in a different form. Okay, so let's say we have like a five and then nine minus two x dx. Then you may say for this one, um, doesn't look like that form. Actually, it still looks like that, right? We can switch the two turns so that the x is in the front. And so in this case, the a is going to be what? The a is negative two. So just keep that in mind. And then you may say, what about the five? What do we do with the five? You know that you can move the five outside the integral, right? So we can simply just keep the five on the outside. Okay, and now, when you keep the five on the outside, you get one over nine minus two uh, x, right? So you can still apply this formula right here, which would be ln of nine minus two x. Oh, okay, so this should be absolute value. 
And then there was a constant of integration. And then I left some space right here because I need to multiply by the reciprocal of the x. The a is negative 2. And so its reciprocal would be negative 1 over 2. And then, of course, we can clean up the answer, right? And clean up the answer by writing negative 5 over 2 ln of absolute value of 9 minus 2x. And that will be our antiderivative for this. OK, so that's simple, right? OK, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and give me a comment. Give me a like, and then also please check out my other math videos. Thank you for watching.